Hi, I'm Sandila. And I'm Alberto. This is New York City, buried in piles of manure generated by its 150,000 horses. The manure would stick to you. You can probably imagine how it stank. As the city grew, so too would the manure. Urban planners got together to solve the crisis, but they couldn't. They couldn't imagine transport without horses. They couldn't imagine that horses would soon be outnumbered by cars. Dystopian futures involving a manure buried city were soon forgotten. This is just one story of smart people not being able to see what we now know was just around the corner. Traditional forecasting and risk analysis has limits. Yes, we can assign probabilities to events using past data, but in the New York example, econometrics, machine learning, they wouldn't have been able to predict the Model T would bring cars to the masses. Probabilities can be far less clear. In fact, the whole set of possible outcomes can change. Foresight scholars tell us that the world is turbulent, unpredictably uncertain, in a Knightian sense, unknown unknowns, novel, as Yogi Berra said, the future ain't what it used to be. Ambiguous, even for so-called known unknowns, we can't see how they're going to pan out. In other words, say the scholars, the future is tuna. Now, since we can't predict the future, strategic foresight doesn't even try. Strategic foresight is the systematic exploration of multiple plausible futures to inform present decision-making. Strategic foresight reduces the risk of bad decisions premised on a future that never came. At the fund, we use two foresight tools, scenario planning and policy gaming. Let's show you. Scenario planning is the systematic exploration of different futures. And in particular, it involves crafting manufactured narratives that are plausible yet challenging and set in the future. Angela Wilkinson, who headed the OECD for strategic foresight work, says there are no facts about the future, only stories. Nobel-winning economists agree that stories are powerful. We at the fund follow the Oxford scenario planning approach. We make scenarios with the users, not for them, and we do this in workshops. We also use the workshops to answer questions with the scenarios. Let me give you an example. Our management and board wanted a broad and open-ended inquiry into how the fund could increase the value it adds to its members over the next 25 years. The red, green, and blue scenarios are framed by two key uncertainties represented by the axes you can see on the slide. First, technological change. How might technology enhancing humans or not affect the economy directly through the labor force or indirectly through the way the governments can respond? Two, how might societies have come to trust the ability of established institutions to deliver services? We've also had more focused scenarios. For example, we recently used them to inform policies for a post-COVID recovery. We published scenarios on the future of work in Africa in our regional economic outlook. Scenarios can also be used to stress test or interrogate a proposed plan or strategy. We have used scenarios to make our surveillance more robust to that tuna future I was talking about. These scenarios will be published in our comprehensive surveillance review. In this scenario, environmentally motivated protectionism slows economic growth. Countries grapple with the trade-offs and complementarities between debt sustainability and environmental sustainability. The scenario is set in 2030, it's rich, and it contains a whole range of factors to consider for economic policy making this decade. But what if something happened much sooner? What if some sort of shock were to materialize well before 2030? Sandile? Well, one idea to figure that out would be to use policy gaming. Policy games are strategic simulation exercises involving role play. 
Now, despite the playful sounding name, these are serious exercises meant to help teams uncover their blind spots and avoid wishing away problems. For instance, say you're in a team meeting handling a crisis and someone says, well, let's just assume that that complication is not a factor in this instance. Policy games squarely put that factor back on the table. So how do scenario planning and policy games complement one another? Well, policy games connect the dots between the present and that far off distant future that Alberto just described. Showing how seemingly small action reaction sequences can iteratively lead to major shifts in the geopolitical and economic landscape. These exercises are most useful when the issue is timely, when there are many uncertainties, when actors have both conflicting and complementary goals, and when you're interested in an actor's particular preferences and priorities. Here at the fund, we use a particular type of gaming called matrix games. These games place an outsized emphasis on discussion. In addition to discussion, adjudication and randomness, yes, using dice, help determine player success, and they in turn respond to one another. However, there's no better way to understand these games than to actually see one live. Alberto, shall we give them a peek? Sure. So tomorrow we all wake up to the following breaking news. A large G20 country has announced an interim border adjustment tax, 50% on pollution intensive imports. They're doing this to combat climate change and they're asking other countries to follow suit. Audience, put yourself in a minister of trade's shoes. You're another large G20 country. Maybe you've been dealing with some economic complications recently. What would you do? One thing you might consider is, what are my major trading partners going to do? Let me ask you, Alberto, what would you do in this instance? As trade minister, I'm going to lower my environmental standards, cozy up to an environment unfriendly nation, and be a haven for dirty industries. This will ignite a trade deal with that country, and the investment and jobs will buoy my economy. I have plenty of reasons why this will work. Just take a look. Well, other players in the room might provide some reasons why that bold idea might not work, as you can see here. One reason a player might give is, this is not politically feasible for you. There's rising climate activism in your country. Now, as adjudicator, I would step back, look at all of these pros and cons, and note that the cons seem to outweigh the pros in this instance. I'm gonna set a pretty high bar for you to clear for to be successful. In particular, I'm gonna say that you need a nine or higher. That's a 28% chance of success. Audience, what do you think? Is he gonna be successful? It's time to roll the dice. Massive defeat. Not only was Minister Alberto not able to bring his policy to fruition, he now needs to impose massive carbon taxes. And this helps inch us towards that world described under planet protectionism. Now we've just shown you a peek at two tools that we use here at the fund, scenario planning and war gaming. However, their benefits are plentiful. First, in the past, we've explored how a non-economic shock like a pandemic can lead to a global economic snowball effect. This helped catalyze the creation of the Catastrophe Containment and Relief Trust. It provides debt relief to countries when they're hit with natural disasters or climate shocks or health shocks. Second, it shifts our mindset and makes us more receptive to emergent risks. And that includes on climate change as well as the economic effects of COVID-19. Finally, it's helped us assess how technology changes can impact capacity development, including in fiscal areas. But this is not just about the fund. Strategic foresight could be useful for you as well. Governments, private sector, think tanks alike all use this. Perhaps you wanna do a broad exploration of the trends and uncertainties on the landscape 50 years out. Or maybe you have a particular question in mind, like demographic shifts. Maybe you wanna examine how a certain strategic direction is going to be robust under multiple plausible futures. If your question has a long-term element, 
has many uncertainties. If there's actors and models that are really, really hard in terms of interactions, then strategic foresight might be the perfect tool for you. And it's often complementary with more traditional research approaches. Now, Alberto and I cannot predict the future. However, by systemically engaging with multiple plausible futures to inform our current present decisions, you can increase the likelihood that you'll be ready, regardless of what surprises await us around the corner. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>